Hello everyone and welcome to this class. In this class, we are going to learn about the basis of classification and identification of microorganism. First of all, let me explain something to you. So, let us say I grow a certain microorganism in a petri plate. And we all know that in order to grow this microorganism, uh, after the growth of the microorganism, we all have to, you know, identify those microorganisms that this microorganism fall into which category. Okay, that's why we have to classify them and uh, identify them and then classify those microorganisms. So, for the identification and classification of microorganisms, several properties are taken into consideration as criteria for classification. And here are those. Uh, criteria first of all is morphological character then comes biological sorry biochemical characters and along with them physiological characters are also observed then comes ecological properties and at last comes cultural characters okay first we will talk about morphological character in order to obtain the information regarding the morphological character we use staining okay there are various staining method like gram staining uh, Neil Zelfin staining, which is acid fast staining, okay, and some other staining methods are also there. Then we detect the presence or absence of flagella and pili, and or some other external characters which are found in uh, microorganism, okay. And then comes presence of endospore along with its position. So let us say this is my bacteria. So endospore can be present in various position, okay can be position uh, position toward terminal can be position toward central or other places also and ultrastructure of the cell is basically how the bacterial cell is seen under microscope electron microscope etc then presence or absence of cell wall presence or absence this will also determine the morphological character of that particular organism then the second criteria is the biochemical or physiological characters okay so biochemical and physiological characters are determined using peptidoglycan pseudomurine picoic acid polysaccharides whether these are present or not the end product of metabolism are also observed in this case uh, the presence of photosynthetic pigment like some bacteria uh, photoautotropic bacteria photoautotropic like they have some certain pigments which help them in photosynthesis that's why certain photosynthetic pigments are also observed then comes the point of cell inclusions like poly beta hydroxy butyrate now these things forms inclusions in the body okay so inclusions are basically like this is a cell and they will form a certain small small bodies inside the cell which are called inclusion bodies okay these are also character of bacteria then comes a uh, mechanism of energy conversion whether they are using ATP as an energy source or some other like GTP or CTP as major energy source or it can be possible that they are using sunlight directly for the source of the energy combustion. Then comes effect of inhibitors and antibiotics on microorganisms. Okay, these are also considered when we talk about uh, biochemical and physiological characters of uh, microorganisms. And after that comes ecological properties so the first line of this ecological properties is that the different microorganisms are found in different environment okay like lithophiles are found in high soil areas some hydrophiles are, can be found in water bodies okay and uh, if you talk about other ecosystem like human can also act as an ecosystem in itself and you know some bacteria can be found in our ecosystem as normal microflora okay like uh, if you talk about some can be found in mouth okay some certain amount of bacteria or some specific group of bacteria can be found in mouth but those bacteria will not be found in stomach or small intestine so like intestinal bacteria are different compared to the bacteria of your mouth then after these ecological properties comes the cultural characters okay so many microorganism have specific growth requirements for example temperature now as you know bacteria as such grow around 37 degrees celsius but if you talk about fungi or fungi they will grow around 25 degrees celsius so you can say different microorganism have different growth requirement according to whatever 
the climate they prefer then comes oxygen and if they want oxygen then they are aerobic aerobic microorganisms if they don't want then they are anaerobic <coughs> then comes light whether they can grow in the presence or whether they will grow in the absence of light okay and here are of some few colonies characteristics which are very important for a microbiologist or even to a biochemist also so here is it colonies are characterized by their shape size texture consistency color and feature etc and here are some actual characters which some which microbiologists considered while classifying the microorganism first will be metabolic character then antigenic character bacteriocin typing bacterio sorry yeah bacteriocin typing bacteriophage typing g plus c content nucleic acid hybridization and nucleic acid sequencing okay so first we will start with first metabolic character you know about metabolism metabolism is anabolism plus catabolism okay so this is a complex process and different bacteria or different microorganisms shows different type of metabolism and on the basis of their metabolic pathway they can be classified into different categories so these are the two major categories in which we divide first is photoautotropic they use light as their source of energy and okay and that's how they are categorized using they use sunlight okay sunlight and when we talk about chemotropic then they use chemicals actually i'm i'm saying chemicals but these are not synthetic chemicals but natural chemicals okay natural means uh like we can say the chemicals like uh, some carbs some amino acids which are found naturally in the environment some gases like oxygen carbon dioxide etc okay then after this uh, metabolic characters comes antigenic characters okay so let us say this is a bacteria and it has this particular antigen let me say this is antigen o which is i have written here somatic antigen okay so every time when bacteria enter in our body our body produce some antibodies and if we produce monoclonal 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 antibodies against these antigens then we can determine whether the antigen of one species one species is similar to second species or not and using this criteria we can find whether the species is related to one another or whether it is from same genus or not okay so there are different antigens and basically three antigens which we use is somatic antigen then comes flagellar antigen and capsular antigen capsular antigen you know capsule flagellar antigen is when flagella is present and somatic antigen you can found in um, salmonella typhi species and some other species also not only typhi but still it is an antigen okay then comes uh, okay what was its number it's was second so the third criteria which we use is bacteriophage type so basically bacteriophage is a virus okay and it is a special virus which only act on bacteria so when this bacteriophage act on bacteria then uh, then what happens it it inserts its genetic material into that particular organism not organism microorganism okay and what it will do it will form its component which will join later and when they join they will suffocate this whole microorganism and will burst out burst out of it and in that particular process they will kill that bacteria okay so that's how we can you know categorize the bacteria as well let us say i am taking a particular bacteriophage against uh, hey, let me erase this one okay let let us say this is a bacteriophage against e coli okay and we have three cultures this contain e coli this contain s aureus and uh, and let us say this contain pseudomonas 
pseudomonas okay now what when i will place this particular bacteriophage into all three samples so only the e coli species will die but others will remain alive healthy and reproducing so that's how we can you know find whether this particular organism is uh, e coli or not and similar thing we can do with other species also using bacteriophage then fourth point is about bacteriocin typing okay so let us say this is my organism uh, i'm sorry for my bad drawing let us say this is e coli okay so e coli releases some particular kind of chemical chemical okay which is called colicin colicin okay now what happens is suppose this is strain i'm just assuming its name as x12 okay uh, but if if this x12 will release this colicin then this colicin will inhibit inhibit all the other species of e coli e coli okay and the main point is that this colicin will only act on its own species so that other species will will not uh, you know grow in the presence of this colicin okay similarly other microorganisms also produce these kind of chemicals we usually call them bacteriocin okay so bacteriocin is the chemical which inhibits almost same species not almost same species let us say uh, s or s yes produce this bacteriocin okay so x or s yes and subspecies will be let us say s1122 okay and i am about to grow s or s yes, s or s yes, s1123 so this is basically different species compared to the species which is producing the bacteriocin so when this bacteriocin is produced this bacteriocin will act on this species ss123 and when this act this particular species will not grow and that's how we can categorize our microorganisms and after this fourth point which is bacteriocin typing comes the fifth point which is g plus c content and g stand for guanosin and c for cytosine you know a t g c but if you talk about bacteria then a u g c u uracil okay so g plus c content is fixed in a particular species okay so let us say i have this species uh, let us say this is species 1 and this is species 2 so the g plus c content of species 1 g plus c will be let us say 71% while g plus c content of species 2 will be g plus c is equal to let us say 20% so basically these two species have different g plus c content so these two will be different species but what will happen oh i'm really sorry is fixed fixed in particular species okay so let us say this is species 2 which i don't know what species it is but its g plus c content is 71.1% which is close to species 1 so we can say that these two species are almost same almost same okay so if we are not going to categorize them into one species but we can obviously categorize into same genus so we can say these two species belongs to same genus and that's how we categorize them and after this comes sixth i think yeah sixth which is nucleic acid hybridization okay so similar species will show hybridization while dissimilar dissimilar will not show hybridization or it can be possible that they may show partial hybridization so in order to explain this i am going to again draw in my bad drawing okay let me draw it let us say this is a uh, species 1 and this is its dna content and i am taking this dna outside of it okay so after that i am going to take this is species 2 and here its dna i am again going to take this out of this species okay now what i will do is i will uh, heat them so that they can convert into single strand okay so now what will happen is they will try to attach themselves with each other okay so 
the DNA strand of one and two, if they if they attach partially, partially or not, then we can say they belong to different species. But if somehow what happens is uh, like this is species two and here is its DNA which is almost similar to the DNA of species 1 and if I merge these DNA then what will happen is they will combine in almost perfect sense and hybridization hybridization is more okay more or in high amount so what happens is this hybridization will confirm that these species are related to one another and that is again a good criteria for us to differentiate, characterize or classify these microorganisms. And the last and most important point of them all is nucleic acid sequencing. In nucleic acid sequencing, what we do is we take the genetic material. Okay. So genetic material, as you know, this is our DNA. It's our genetic material. Same goes for uh, prokaryotes also, which is our bacteria. They also have DNA as a genetic material. So what we do is we take out all the like A, T, G, C, A, U, U, A, A, T, C, C, G, C, etc. And we sequence them. Okay. So by sequencing these nucleic acid and comparing them with other species, like this is from species one and this is from second species. And if we compare them, if... Uh, if they have some similarities then we can say then they belong to same species uh, not same but similar almost similar species later we have to do other tests also in order to confirm whether it's same or not but still this is how nucleic acid sequencing is done and particularly we nowadays use 16 sr rna and why are we doing this because you can say this is very stable stable and reserved reserved sequence okay from earlier time we have very less very less changes changes to this particular sequence of 16 sr rna that's why we till date use this 16 sr rna not till date but actually we are recently using this 16 sr rna in order to classify organisms This 16 srRNA shows similarities and dissimilarities so that uh, we can find whether the species are same or not. Okay, so that's it for this class. Thank you very much and see you soon.